Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So if you're new here, my name's Mary and I love to share the projects I have going on around our home here with you all. So in today's video, I'll be working on these TV trays here beside me. I always like to pick them up when I see them in garage sales or thrift stores, especially if they're a good price. I usually pay anywhere from maybe two to five dollars for one. Um, often they're not a very nice color, maybe kind of yellowish or orangish, but there's so much that can be done with them. I've redid a lot of them over the years and they're so handy to have around. We have quite a few of them uh, throughout our home. Um, they're just so easy to you know, fold up and maybe stick into a closet or behind a piece of furniture if you don't want them out all the time and then just get them out, um, set them up, you know, use them for a glass of water or a computer or something. So join me as I will be working on some different ways on getting a new look to these little tables and I hope you guys enjoy. So I sanded this top down to actually remove the finish. Often these little tables are really easy to, they just have like a light finish on them. Um, and then I plan to stain it. I always like to have the back side of the top looking half decent since if the table is folded you will see that. I decided for a couple of these tables I would cut some lines into them using a circular saw. I had done this in my she shed in the backyard. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you may remember I did the floor this way just to give it a planked look. And I've done this before on these little tables and often I will use the table saw, but it gave out on me, so I will just have to resort to the circular saw. And since I have my guide all set for a certain measurement, I am gonna do two of these tabletops and grooves like this. So I started out with just using a rag to apply the stain and then soon realized I couldn't really get into the grooves, so I'm going to try a brush. I ended up using a razor blade to get some of that stain into my deep grooves. Again, this probably would not have happened if I had used my, been able to use my table saw, uh, much more precise cuts, all the same depth. It started to sprinkle a bit, so I will be doing my painting underneath this roof here, which I don't really like to do this because we have a Carolina Wren that is raising a little family underneath here, and she will be scolding at me all the time, I'm sure. But she went and built a nest inside a small case of oil, like containers of oil that we use for our chainsaw, weed eater, that type of oil. 
and she found a space in that case and I'll try to get a video of this for you guys to see but it's so cute we're just leaving her be of course we'll buy new oil until she's finished raising her family but they definitely find the craziest places to build nests I will be using my old air sprayer that I have had for years already to apply this paint um, I haven't used it this year so far since the weather hasn't really been nice to spray paint outside so I'm just hoping it'll work. So the paint I'm using is a Do It Best brand Best Look paint. It is a satin sheen. Um, the color is called Ultra White. It's just what they have on the shelf. But I went ahead and mixed a few drops of dark gray into it just to get that gray undertone. For this table, I am using a tannish color of paint. Um, it is also rust brand. So what I want to do with this stain top here is stencil the word eat onto it. I thought it would be really fitting for a little table like this. And I use my Silhouette Cameo to cut out the letters. And this word will be available on my Etsy shop either as a decal or a stencil. Any paint will work for a stained surface like this, but in this case I want the color black and what I have on hand is actually a chalkboard paint and it will work perfectly to fill in these letters. For this table, I will be applying a map to the top using Mod Podge. So what I plan to do with this table is add like a green sack stripe design on here. I am using some contact paper from Dollar General as my painter's tape because it is a lot cheaper than that tape is.
what I'm planning on doing with this table is applying a French looking design on here. And what I'm doing is using parchment paper to transfer it onto the top. Here I have a piece of parchment paper cut exactly the same size as a piece of copy paper. And here at the top, I taped it together uh, just so it kind of you know holds together like this. And I will run this through the printer and the image is in reverse. That way, once I transfer it onto the top, it'll be just right. And I've done this before in my videos. You may have seen me do this before, but I thought I'd show you guys. I always love to see uh, you know, that type of design on little tables like this. To rub this design onto the wood, you can use any hard object. Uh, in this case, I will be uh, using a marker. So another thing that you can do with these little tables is actually take them apart and use the top to create a pretty sign. And the legs can be used to just make another little table. And I sometimes add a, you know, a tray or maybe a round or oval piece of wood that I just have lying around of, you know, that comes off of maybe another piece of furniture or something um, that can be just turned into another little table that looks unique. In this case, I had this round sign that I made years ago. I'm not sure where I had actually gotten it, the original piece of wood, but I just created a sign because I wanted a number to go with a display of some sorts, and I thought this would make a cool little tabletop. Since the sign here is pretty distressed, I will be distressing the legs also using a black paint marker. Doing a makeover like this, you could of course use any paper you wish and Mod Podge it onto the top, or at times I will use a self-adhesive wallpaper or contact paper. Um, that can work really nice too. I chose to leave this little table just the way it is. I just love to see the lines in there creating that planked look. Um, I had debated, you know, adding a farmhouse-ish design on it, which that would look lovely too, but for now I'll just keep it this way. Since tables like this often come in a set of maybe four, I think it would be really neat to add the grain sack stripes and then make them, you know, four different colors for each little table. For the eat table, I think it would be really neat if you would have a set of four to maybe add um, some other words on the tops, um, maybe coffee or tea, drink, um, just anything kind of along that line I think would make a great little set.
this French country design off of a graphics fairy and I will link that down below in case you want to um, get something from her. I just love her site. I get a lot of my designs from there and it would be neat if you'd have a set of you know four tables to do maybe four different French country designs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are maybe inspired to dig out those old TV trays that you haven't used in years um, and maybe decorate them or you know redo them to fit your style. Um, again, they're so neat to have around. I hope you guys are having a great week and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!